of the embedded world 2023 and what is the brand new trend? One thing I've seen at this year event is we really see this is not a new trend, but I saw it confirmed that this event is having more and more, let's say, resource constraints and cost efficient MCU solutions that provide more and more advanced graphic solutions. There's more and more vendors, I could see it again this year at, at the event, that provide these kind of solutions. So this means that for our customers, there's more and more need to provide solutions to easily target these different MCUs. We have seen this now for a long time on MPUs, but this is coming more and more on MCUs. This year event was a big success for us here at, at Qt. We could see customers and the attendees back to the event compared to the previous one. So there was really a lot of traffic on our booth and specifically related to Qt for MCUs and our new QA solutions also, we have seen a lot of interest from our customers. And again, especially QA for embedded, this is now some of our new solutions. A lot of interesting feedback and discussions we had with, with customers around this specific. Coradex is, I think, one of the few SOM makers or hardware makers in general who have understood that SOM doesn't stand for system on module, but for software on module or solution on module. So in other words, what I'm getting at is it's not the hardware where they can differentiate with Verisite, Avnet, Seco, and whoever there is, it's the software where they differentiate. So the hardware, well, it's an IMX8 uh, anyway, or even if you take some chips from Texas Instruments, it's the hardware. So processor, GPU, some peripherals, it's all the same. You put the Linux system on top of it, so some BSB, and that's that's it for most of the SOM makers, SOC makers, and so on. And it's not enough. So you need a lot more. If you look at what customers really need, it's not just the hardware. So they all have to build a Linux system yeah. and just the BSP, it's simply not enough. They all need something like, well, they have to customize their Linux system, obviously. And then they need uh, things like over the air update. Of course, everyone needs it. Typically they want remote support via VNC or so. They need a window manager. They need secure boot. Yes, they more and more understand that this is a thing they need. They can't do it. It's IoT devices. They can't do without it. So they are connected to the internet. So they need a secure system. They need trusted execution environments. They need a communication between the microcontroller and the microprocessor on their boards. And hardly any of my customers uses the microcontrollers. They pay for it, but they don't use it. You could use it for real-time operations. You could use it for safety-critical operations because it's easier to certify. It's easier to handle than a Linux operating system. So that's some standard building blocks every customer needs. And they don't get it from the SOM SOC makers, terminal makers. Okay. They just get a very rudimentary Linux image. And Toradex is the only one who I think starts to understand that they have to offer more. The more is, yes, they have an over-the-air update solution by now. It's a solution. It's not some description on the wiki. That's not enough because that still costs time. And they have an over-the-air update solution, especially together with their Torizon container operating system. Yeah, they can even update the bootloader. They can update the Linux root file system, the applications. They can do that incrementally. And that's what I learned at Embedded World. And there's more. They are also building a module for secure boot. It takes a lot of time to get that working. And they are aiming at building a, a module that works out of the box. Fantastic. Hey, Frank, how is Embedded World 2023? Hi, Axel. I'm so happy to see you today. One of the reasons that we actually go to the Embedded World is to meet old acquaintances, to re-establish relationships, and of course, to meet new customers and potential customers as well. 
talking about new things, we see a tremendous surge in interest for fail-safe data file systems as well as certifiable data file systems. Most interestingly, medical area and industrial slash energy. One of the highlights or one of the main differences I observed was the way everybody started talking about Rust. We were there last year and we were one of the few people exhibiting a Rust-based product. But the only people we spoke to about Rust were basically community members from the different Rust meetups, Rafael, et cetera, were there. And, and it was like a, a chat among friends, really. We were sharing colorful Rust stickers and things like that. But it was a friendly chat about Rust and how nice the world would be if... And that changed this year. That was quite different. Naturally, all of our friends from the Rust community were there again, and that was lovely, and we exchanged stickers. But there were several exhibitors that were showcasing Rust-based products or showcasing support for Rust, especially in the context of safety and security and safety-critical systems. But also, for example, there were vendors that had a long tradition and debugging tools and that were all C-based. And even they were telling me that they added recently support for Rust symbol demangling and debugging. And of course, we were present again, not in the safety critical space, but we were present with our Rust-based UI toolkit. And also the conversations with the visitors was quite different. There were quite a lot of visitors that we spoke to in the context of UI-based user interfaces. And quite a lot of them said they're doing now user interfaces with Rust on microcontrollers, for example. Or they're already working on that. And that was quite a different tone and different atmosphere than last year. And it makes me really look forward to next year. How was it for you? Hi, Axel. Yeah. Thank you for talking again to you after the fair. It was great to meet you. And yeah, I'm gladly telling you my impression, what was the biggest trends. Since we are from the part or the area of HMI development, I would like to say a few words about that. And I definitely see one of the biggest trends in the HMI development is the continuing trend of improving user interfaces and also improving user experience in products. I can say finally designers and UI UX experts are getting a voice in the product development process. And that really shows in the product in the end. Just to illustrate it, what I mean, the importance of UI UX in product development. I have a kind of example from CNC machines. Maybe you know what I mean. I mean, it's that machines who used to have hundreds of buttons, big screens, and you really needed experienced engineers that had to go under the go lengthy trainings to learn how to operate the machines. And the machines were just bought and built from a technical functional point of view. But however, a modern CNC machine has now a well-designed interface that interact with the user, making them easier to use and increase the productivity and safety. Um, machines start to interact with you and tell you what to do in case of an error. It's not like in the past when you had to look up in the manual, what is alarm seven and then where's the sensor or so ever. And that's really, I think, a very good example representative for the whole industry. And maybe a few words to us as we have a strong background in the automotive sector, we understand this trend and importance very well. So we had this demand already much earlier, I would say as HMI was always a crucial factor in a car. It always was an important factor of the brand and contributing to the overall product experience. So that's why we implemented a very unique approach, I would say to HMI development. We bring designers and software engineers together to one platform, one tool, and to enable them to collaborate in a very efficient way. So we start with what the designer has, we import what they already created. So we don't want to start from scratch again. We take a Photoshop file, we take the Figma or export or even from the cloud and enrich it in an AI assisted process. And this way we take over what there is already and don't start from scratch again. And we believe, and also our customers has confirmed this in many, many projects, that this improves the product development greatly and helps also to improve the cooperation between these two fields. Because to be honest, it's it's different areas, the designer and software engineers, they think differently. And you don't want to have a designer code or a code a coder design 
So I think this is one of the problems we saw here and we solved them. Hey guys, thank you for the reports. And next year, I would like to see you at our booth in Nuremberg. Bye-bye. <laughs>